So, greetings. Yeah. And very, very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you too. So you are Stephen Twinings of the of the famous tea brand Twinings, oh. and um, we are here to celebrate the launch of a New Zealand new New Zealand tea. Yes. Can you new tell me briefly? About new Zealand Earl Grey tea. So yes. we wanted to uh, because our customers down here have been telling us they wanted to have a, a greater choice of Earl Grey type teas, and obviously we've got the original Earl Grey, which is very much staying, and Lady Grey, which is well established now. But they wanted something slightly different. So last mm. year we. Uh, toured from Cape Rangi right down to, to Bluff, giving as many people as possible the opportunity to, to choose one of four teas that we prepared, all of the kind of Earl Grey flavour, and this is the one that came out head and shoulders above it. So it's got a, a hint of what goes into Earl Grey, that's the citrus fruit, the bergamot, and then orange blossom. So it's a much softer, more gentle, mellow version of Earl Grey. And we have, have some of the tea? Oh, of course we can. There's no point having tea in a tea pot if you're not going to drink it. So. Um, how, how did you take it? Would you uh, just, just, just black. I've had some earlier and I thought it was lovely. Great, thank you, yes. Uh, I think this one does drink very nicely without milk, but equally well with milk. The, the, the first rule of tea drinking is your cup of tea, have it the way you like it. There you go. Thank you very much. Now, I understand this is the second tea that, um, that has been specially created for New Zealand. Yes. And that we are the only country in the world that has this privilege. Certainly you're the only country in the world that has two teas with their name on, because even the English now only have English breakfast, because um, right. you've got New Zealand breakfast tea, yeah. uh, and now New Zealand Earl Grey. And I think it, it, it's very much part of the company's philosophy to act locally, so we work with a, a great team down here, and they have connected with New Zealand tea drinkers, mm. who are per capita, certainly in the, 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 the Premier League of tea drinkers around the world. Right. Um, and have been for... 120, 40 years? Pretty, I, I suspect so, yes. But our data doesn't go back that far, but yes, I suspect always. So, I mean, as a, as a customer of Twinings, New Zealand has been a significant market for mm. a lengthy period of time. Yes, absolutely. Um, and we're very keen to continue to provide things that suit local tastes. Mm. Most other countries would look at tea... I don't think they have such an affinity with tea as New Zealand does. It's yes. not as much as part of the fabric of life as it is for, for the British and for the, for the New Zealanders. We seem to, I mean, this, this is just as an aside, but we seem to be sort of embracing coffee culture now. But, but I mean, certainly mm. the older generation and, and growing up, tea, tea has been constantly you know, ever present. Yes. Um, and I think the reason coffee culture uh, appears to be so prevalent is that it is highly visible when you're out on the home, street. On the street. But actually, tea drinking is more latent. It's done at home or mm. it's done in the office, but you don't see so much of it going on. Mm. But yeah, there's still a great deal of tea drinking going on in this it's country. It's all caffeine that they sell, isn't it? Um, I wouldn't like to comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, the twining is quintessentially English. Mm. Um, and you were talking a little bit earlier about some of the history. Yeah. Um, tea first arrived in England in 1706, which is the period mm, um, of thereabouts. Th that's when the company started. So I guess it was probably about 50 years or so before that, 1662. Because the British were actually slightly slow to come to tea. Right. As Europeans, it was the Portuguese and the Dutch who were discovered tea. Yeah, so that was under Charles II, Charles II, so, II yeah. the and Restoration. And he married a Portuguese princess. Mm. Now, she was a big tea lover, and so she brought tea and decided to make it fashionable in, uh, in the UK. Huh. But not everyone welcome this, uh, this new drink. Yeah. Um, amazingly, the men of our church decreed that it was a sinful drink. They have since changed their mind, had to report. Um, the, men of the, England, the, the Church of England? Yes. For yeah. how long was it, was it a sinful drink? Not, not that long. I think they came around fairly quickly. Right, but after the, they started taxing it. Um, <laughs> it was, that, that helped to get the tax on, for sure. Um, the, the, the doctor said it was bad for you. Now, well, we obviously know today that uh, drinking tea it should be part of a healthy lifestyle. Mm. The, it makes a great contribution to your health. Mm. Um, but the people who really did the damage were the brewers. Our water was not safe to drink. Mm. So what the British did was get the brewers to process it into a light, weak beer, which we drank for lunch, dinner, and even for breakfast. Uh, now, they feared tea, because obviously you boil the water. And then it's safe. Yeah. Uh, so they, they were the lobby group who got this huge tax on tea, as you say, up to 119%. Yes. That immediately made tea an iconic drink. 
and so uh, what the tax made it uh, iconic yeah, yeah. Because, because it made only a few, only people, could few people could afford it yeah oh. so you will find in the uk portraits of families drinking tea not hot, hot chocolate or coffee or other new drinks because tea was this status symbol okay so back then tea was um you said earlier cost the equivalent of 300 dollars per 100 grams Brass. so we're talking three thousand dollars per kilo yes which um I mean, <laughs> that makes it roughly as expensive as marijuana, probably. I, I'm not aware. <laughs> illegal, <laughs> yes, in an illegal market. Uh, uh, yes. But it also encouraged people to smuggle tea into our country because you go across to France and Holland about it much cheaper. Right. Um, and the, the smuggled tea was then adulterated with other things. Mm. These twigs, dry bark. And so a kilo of tea became two kilos of tea. But when Thomas Twining set us up, he did so with a great philosophy that he would only do one thing and one thing well, that was buy and blend fine quality tea. Mm. And it was, he wasn't so badly affected by the smugglers, it was actually um, the, the second generation who really had to steer the company through the... The, the smuggling the, era. Yeah. Right. Uh, and then happily, the, the third generation was instrumental in getting the tax down in 1784, which allowed the British all to rush out and afford and this invited. wonderful drink. And then if you have a cup of tea, it always delivers. If you're hot, it cools you down. If you're cold, it warms you up. If you're overexcited, it'll calm you down. Likewise, you can just... The world's a better place for it. And in the initial period, it was a, it was a Chinese source tea, and then, yes. and then it moved to India. The, the, to break the, the Chinese monopoly, a, a Scotsman actually went in on a covert mission and studied how and observed how they processed the tea having picked it, but also got hold of some tea seed, which we then took into uh, India, because obviously that's part of the fish mm. well, and started to grow it there. So Indian tea was first sold in the UK in 1839. And it was only because Ceylon used to be a coffee drink, uh, producing nation, and unfortunately they, their coffee plants got wiped out by a dreadful disease. And they then replaced it with tea, and so Ceylon comes along, and tea's been spreading out around the rest of the world ever since. And is, was, is Ceylon, was Ceylon very important in terms of the production for twine? Um, we have all we've never been growers of tea. We've never owned a single tea garden in our wow. entire history. Because we are free agents to buy tea from wherever it's grown. Mm. I and mean, of course, there's some classically good teas coming out of Sri Lanka, and mm. we will be there and we will. We but, you get, but Twining gets tea, tea from everywhere, doesn't it? Um, the tea is produced, I think, in 32 countries around the world, and we buy from about 16, so roughly half of them. Because we're after the great teas, we're right. after the quality teas. Now, and Twining is the only tea brand that, that has that degree of pedigree to date back such a long period of time? Well, I think we're the only... There were tea companies that started a little before us, but they've diversified into shipping or they became other companies um, or went out of business. So, mm. well, yeah, I think... And I always say I think that we are the world's oldest tea company because there might be one in China somewhere that uh, we haven't discovered yet. But yeah, pretty and, pretty and, sure. And up until 1964, you were, in fact, just a tea company as well. Oh, very much so, yeah. But but now, now um, Twining has become part of a larger food company? Yes, but Twining still only do tea. Yeah. Uh, and that is that is what we're good at. Um, so it's a separate company that's owned by a... Yes. ...by a publicly listed... Yes. ...conglomerate, yeah. food conglomerate. Well, yeah. Roughly like Goodman Fielder um, for a New Zealand audience. Um, cool. Um, well, it's very nice to meet you. And you're, you're the 10th generation of, of the, of the, the Twining tea family. family. Yeah. And um, your father was also... A twining in the tea business? Oh, very much so, yeah, retired about eight years ago. Uh, yes. Uh, as was my grandfather, et, et al. And I understand that you're heading back to go to the Olympics. Uh, yes, uh, it is obviously not often that we get to host the Olympics, and uh, I, I'm lucky enough to have a ticket actually to see one of uh, your hot medal contenders uh, in one of the equestrian events. Sounds brilliant. And so, mm. Mark Todd, and good luck mm. to Mark Todd. Do, are you going to be, 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 be cheering for him or for, for an English? I coach? have to be patriotic. Right. Who's, who's, who's your... I favorite? think um, Zara Phillips is obviously quite a strong medal hope, and it would be nice to see her follow in her mother's footsteps. Um, right. but yes. I have to say, I'm not that well up on. Um, my good lady knows much more about this world than I do. <laughs> but it'll be, it'll be fantastic to be part of the Olympics. And yeah. It was very nice to meet you. Likewise. Thank you.